What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Supper Suite at TIFF 2022 for another interview for a movie that I liked quite a bit. Susie searches. Congratulations on this one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Genuinely, I want to say that Collider is one of my favorite places ever. And I was just reminding you that you may have forgotten, but we did a, uh, a a weird interview where you said, write down your feelings on these plates and then smash them so you break away your feelings. Whoa. And, um, you know, my therapist and I have been chasing that high ever since. So that it's been it years was. since I felt that good. Wow. It was like smash away something that gave you bad vibes. Oh I like God. that. Yeah, and I think I said, I was again. like, yeah, Trump supporters, and I smashed it. Yeah, <laughs> still to this day, one of the best videos that we oh, ever made. Amazing. And it's in slow-mo, <laughs> Trump supporters. Really? Yeah. That's so cool. I feel like uh, I still want to make those videos, but now I shoot a lot of things out of my apartment because, you know, post living at home for three years. But Why? I'm still what willing, happened? I'm still willing. This, we just don't have that alleyway studio <laughs> anymore. Oh, so I feel like if I smashed a plate in no. Anywhere I that I film now, I'd probably get in trouble. I was pre pretending not to know what the pandemic was. Yeah. Oh, that too. Mm. Okay, yeah. That was my bit. All right. I'm going to stop talking for the rest of the interview. I got your bit. I got it too. I laughed. Thanks. I laughed. So really, you're the I was just so focused on smashing more plates that it just blew right past me. Uh, let's get to your movie. Uh, Sophie, first thing, I have a feeling you're doing this a lot right now, so I apologize. But for anyone out there who does not know what Susie Searches is yet, can you yeah. give a brief synopsis of your Absolutely. film? Absolutely. Um, Susie Searches is about a girl with a true crime podcast. She lives in a small town in middle America and no one listens to the podcast. And one day this, this kid at her community college goes missing and she sees it as an opportunity to exercise her sleuthing skills and, and it goes off the rails from there. Job well done. I want to talk about spoilers so bad. I know it's not the time. Eventually, we're going to get there, though. Um, so I know this idea started as a short film. Mm -hmm. I know the short film didn't come out all that long ago, 2020, mm -hmm. but things with like social media and our perception of fame change in like a flash. So was yeah. there anything in that gap that you think you needed to evolve for a 2022 audience instead? It's a great question. So the short was really just a proof of concept to show my ability as a director. Um, the film is has a lot of tonal shifts and it's it's a it's a it's a cool tone. It's a it's a thriller, um, or a dark comedic thriller. So um, it's a tricky tone tone to maneuver. And so it was really just a way to limit um, the amount of no's I, I could get because I think the industry tends to be risk averse. And so you wanna make something as a first time feature director that sort of limits the no's as much as possible. That's why I gravitate towards films like this. Take risks or I feel like I care a little less. Mm -hmm. Given the risks being taken and given the fact that this is Sophie's first feature film, what was it about your first meetings with her that made you say, like, I feel like I am in good hands with this director pulling off this concept? Ooh. It was probably that our conversation just was like, yes, and yes, yes, and uh, yes. And I was thinking the same thing. And so then I and it was just like back and forth for literally, I think we zoomed for because it was smack dab in the middle of everything. We uh, zoomed for like two, three. Three. three hours. I think it was actually three and a half. And yeah, we talked for so mm -hmm. long. Like my team was texting like, what's going on? Was that horrible? We didn't hear. And I'm like, I'm still on Zoom with this person. Mm -hmm. And then we went on a bunch of hikes and um, walks. walks and just really got to, I really did. I really did have to suss out the sitch and see like, do I trust this person, right? Mm -hmm. As a new person in your life and, and with, not just you being a new person, but like Susie being a new person in my life too. This is gonna be a long journey and it, and it was. Mm -hmm. It's been years, which is so weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about for you, Alex? Anything stand out? Um, well, Sophie's just awesome. And her, and her short query was awesome. And I saw that. And uh, you know, I've told this story a million times, but <clears throat> her boyfriend is named Ryan Farhoudi and he's a personal trainer. And I was um, training for this uh, other film I did, The Line, and uh, he was like, hey, you know, you should read this script. You should uh, do this movie. And I was like, sure, I'll do it. And he was like, you want to read it? I'm like, sh like, yeah, sure, I'll read it, but I'll do it. 
you know, sounds sounds cool and you're a cool guy and just send it to me. And then they sent it. I was like, yeah, it's awesome. And I was like, oh, let me talk to Sophie and talk to her. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then everybody, you know, on my team was like, yeah, it's really awesome. And I was like, great. And it's kind of every every step of the way. It's just been really positive. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Sounds great. <laughs> That answer is making me think we we sometimes play a would you rather game all about filmmaking. And one of the questions I ask often is, would you rather sign on for a new project without getting to read a script or without getting to know the people that you're going to work with? And it sounds like for you, I did both. Oh, both. (laughs) I'm kidding, by the way. It was the script. If you can't pick up on my little tinge of irony. Don't ever explain your irony. I got to explain my irony. Of course, I read the script and I loved it. But I just like the idea. Everyone's like, you know, I went through this process of thinking and and, and I examined and every page I color coded. And I just like the idea that I was like, I just want to spread the rumor that I didn't even read the script. I just loved you, <laughs> love loved that. Ryan, and I just said, yeah, let's well, do we it. Sounds the great. Whole script and talk for four hours. Exactly. Yeah. So I liked being, and just being like, yeah, yeah that sounds okay. cool. Here, here's my follow up to all this yes. happening. Sophie, as an actor's director, what is something unique about the way Kiersey approaches the work compared to Alex? What's something, uh, as an actor's director, that That's you know so you have to do differently to collaborate Uh-oh. with them? We are so, we're such different actors. Such different, but we're Sorry, ba- I'm not Best gonna- friends. Yeah, yeah their we, processes yeah. are so different, um, which, is, which is part of the joy, is figuring out how your actors work and then molding your ab- ability to communicate or your 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 technique, your directing technique um, to their, what they're needing. So um, I would say Alex is, he's a chameleon. So I don't know if you, you know, you've seen Alex, he's, he, I don't know, can I say you're like a little method? Yes. Okay. Um, (laughs) Alex is a little method and in the best way possible. And so I think for him, giving him the space, giving him just enough, but letting him sort of um, really find his Jesse on his own. I mean, Alex, Alex really inhabited, I mean, from creating an Instagram account, Jesse Walker loves peace to follow. Yeah. Follow, yeah. like, subscribe, like, um, like, uh, love yourself, laugh a lot, live your life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and like creating a new haircut, you got your ears pierced. Gain like 28 pounds. Mm-hmm. Gain 28, 28 pounds. No big deal. Um, whereas Kiersey, she's one of those people, her emotional dexterity, her ability to at one point be laughing with the crew. And then, and mind you, I'll be like, does she need to, I'm like, we're about to shoot. Does she need to? And then I'm like, all right. And then of course they call action and she's, her ability to tap into it in also it's like it's two also seconds straight. yeah it was like it was like also what the subject matter required because Kiersey's really one of my favorite actors I've ever worked with by far and she's so amazing in the movie you can see that but I mean even working with her because I whatever I was staying and it's also like icky to talk about but my most important thing is staying really loose and really in the moment. So like whatever's going on, if it's in the car, I want to like, let's, let's utilize. And Kiersey will just be talking to me about some gossip or something, but it's, it's a, it's a technique. And sometimes I'll be like, you know, getting ready for the scene. She's like, yeah, by the way, did you see how did it and rolling in action? I'm like, yeah. And then suddenly you can feel in the movie that I'm not, it's not, there's no nerves. There's no like, <laughs> You know, we're, there no, in we're just there in mm-hmm. what's going on. And that is all mm-hmm. Kiersey. Kiersey can just make you right there oh, in the moment. So. She's my favorite. My oh, favorite. Their their chemistry on screen is and off screen and off screen mm-hmm. is so magical. And it's one of my favorite things about this movie is, I mean, editing them was a was a true joy. I could honestly go on and on about each one of them and you get to today all day <laughs> all day but, but the how, next few how months long is of this interview because <laughs> no because the camera guy has paced back and forth like uh, like 30 times they are ready to wrap us up and kick us out uh no i still have a lot of questions to get to <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> um here is one specific thing i wanted to ask you because like i know social media can get a little bit of a negative connotation it can be used in negative ways sometimes but just to highlight the good corners there are out there can each of you name something that you really appreciate on social media 
and the internet in general, mm. just something that you have that brightens your day on a regular basis. I honestly do like to see updates from just what, I mean, what social media was initially intended for. Well, I don't know. That's a broad statement for me to make, but I do like to see like the crew of Suzy searches people like that. Otherwise, maybe we wouldn't have been texting. You know, you wouldn't reach out to as much, mm -hmm. but getting to keep in touch with people that I've worked with or seeing what people are, like that I do still care about from high school or something mm -hmm. are doing. I do like the brief updates because the world is moving so fast and we're all working constantly because capitalism eat the rich. And so it's nice to <laughs> be able to, for me, but that's all perspective. I at one point thought that oh my God, Instagram or whatever is so toxic and it's overwhelming me, but I don't really give it that much weight or power anymore. And I, I like to, I pay attention to what I want to pay attention to, you know? And food recipes, food recipes, food recipes. Mm -hmm. Dogs, and like animals and, liking and each animals. other. But like weird Since animals when did like I start watching animal videos? It's the like, dodo? <laughs> the dodo? <laughs> the dodo. The dodo's the an bat? account, it's the best. What? I don't oh, know what that is. I do. Why do I, I know what that is? Well, because they, it's, it's, it's animal, amazing. It's, it's an animal it's like, thing. Oh, it's and like animal. people say, like, yeah. you know, I unfollowed it because it was I was too sensitive for it. Because I you know, follow like gay animals a, and they're not doing anything gay. Maybe they are. I don't know. All animals are gay as far as I know. I know. <laughs> and it, it's called All Animals Are Gay. Animals are gay. Gay animals. You should follow it. It's great videos. I'm going to look that up. It's I have great, grown obsessed cute. with um, otters on I'm social terrified media. Terrified to look that up. Gay I'm animals. To look up gay animals. Okay, that does sound a little. No, it's on Instagram. Stay. Don't go on Google search. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna stay, stay you know what I think Instagram. it is? I think it's because I just realized all of the animals are doing cute, happy things. Yeah. Gay. Well, that, that's why you should all go follow a whole bunch of otters on Instagram because literally everything they do is sweet, adorable, and just them loving each other. Yeah. I think it's only yeah. gay animals. I'm sorry. I'm gonna love. That's like, like the first only thing that I'm gonna do after this. <laughs> it's an OnlyFans account. Oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna wind up searching for this and finding a whole bunch <laughs> know, of I'm random sorry. weird things, but I'm All gonna give it a shot. <laughs> I know they have a lot of followers. Like I'm not making this thing up. This isn't usually like people know. She's making. <laughs> um, question for you too. I'm curious if you ever thought about this. Is there anything else that Susie could have done to get herself a wider audience for her podcast as is? Because it's emphasized that she's really good at what she does. So was there another route she could have taken? Or is it just a matter of like this business and achieving frame is a bit of a crapshoot? I mean, I think we should avoid that question. <laughs> Seriously. I think I think it's a bit of a spoiler, know. right? Know, is there anything she could have is there anything that she could have done? <laughs> Gay animals? Right. Well, if only. Um, well, now you've- Anything else. Maybe anything I else. <laughs> I, I think there's so much online and there's so many podcasts to listen to and so much to see and so many people to follow. It's like, it's an how overwhelming amount. How do you separate? How do you decide? How do you even- Yeah. How is your attention even drawn to one thing necessarily? You know, we're all watching animals on different um there's so many dodo and, gay animals yeah it's it's an overly <laughs> saturated medium and you know a s small town girl that you know isn't that doesn't have a huge amount of followers or friends or community how do you really how do you get seen you know how how do you capture an audience that's le that's the scary thing though is that there is no answer. Like there is no yeah. answer to that situation and that's why we have this kind of cycle yes. of people going to the extreme and making decisions that they know are wrong exactly. in order yeah. to get what they think they want most. Or there are people like Jesse who are just like uh, 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 leaking with sincerity and and pouring his heart out and there's some sort of charisma um or or some sort of honesty and maybe a lack of stuffiness or even an intellectual ability that that is kind of charming and enticing. And he's white, sorry. And a man. Mm -hmm. And what True. society would say is like, oh, he's he's hot and he's like mm -hmm. he, and that in, and all of those other qualities as well. Whereas Susie is charming but does doesn't have access to the world in the same way, I don't think, not just limited to, to like her gender or her race, but in terms of how, yes, people do invite her in or create space for her. And that's what we've been talking about. And there's not really space for her there, you know, to even like for those qualities to maybe even like be seen in her in the same way, which we kind of see in the movie. Like the mm -hmm. world gets to see Jesse. They have so much in common. Yeah. And the world gets to see Jesse for 
who he is and who he desires to be. And Susie's not granted that same, you know, yeah, for a lot of, for many, many reasons. Yeah. She's I've never really home. thought about that like that. She's living at home. She is going to school part time because she has to take care of her mom. So she's working several jobs, you know? It's, yeah, it's. Yeah, I've never really thought about it. So, I've been thinking about it like that the whole time. So I've been thinking about it. You know, she's, she, she's just she's just trying, you know? She's just, I, I find her incredibly compelling. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's what makes all the difference with this movie is that yeah. it's like extremely frustrating to watch knowing her reality and why this is happening. And I don't necessarily condone some of the, the decisions that she makes, but the point is Good. I know why she makes them and that's yeah, what makes her a Susie, compelling film. Sort of. And that's you why- know, We're all sort of Susie. And, and that's like why this Rupert is- Rupert Pupkin or like, you know, Travis Bickle or, you know, some of my favorite lead characters that are, are to die for. Or, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that just, are, are complicated and I like movies that even lean on people being bad or you know having these sort of unsavory qualities because then I feel free to find pieces of myself in them where I don't see myself in the guys with the capes as much mm -hmm. yeah and that's why this is a cautionary tale you know about our society's current fixation with insta celebrity and how it can lead good people with positive intentions astray and yeah, I agree that that Susie is just human, you know, and she's fallible and she's she's just she's just, you know, I don't want to say she's surviving, but like people yeah, are we all are. We yeah. are. Searching. I'm I'm searching. I'm searching. Kind of uh breaking that out and applying that kind of thought to your filmographies. Is there any film that you've made in the past that because there, and it's good that there's so many films out there, but there's so much film and television out there that it's hard to break through. Is there anything that you two have made that you think deserved a wider audience than it got for whatever reason? Alex, I wanna hear your answer. Like everyone, I mean, everyone I feel like is, uh, I don't know. It's 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 who cares? Like I I mean I just feel like you got to make art not because I think if you start getting into oh more people should have seen this or whatever you're already on the wrong path at least for me. I just feel like who gives a shit? It's so hard to make good art and art that means something to you. It's like and and I feel like sometimes people think, "Oh, get off the soapbox. We all want to do well." But the truth is like yeah, I want to do well, but at this point, it's so much worse to be in something that does well that you don't really like or doesn't really feel good. Then, you know, it's like how sometimes, you know, the best food or something not everybody likes or something, but it, it, some people just go crazy for it and travel to conventions for, that's what I loved about Pig, like Truffles is this community of people who are, who will k literally kill and steal pigs for this thing that like I'd never even tried before the movie and I just mm -hmm. I really? don't know I just think it's literally I'd never tried it wow. and then I became an actual obsessive yeah, of person course you did. but um I don't know I, I I just like I just I really don't like the idea that we're actors have any sort of like stake in how many people see it or whatever I just I, it just doesn't matter the movies that have done the best or have mattered the most it just you think about like like nobody saw Raging Bull or King of Comedy and whatever like Scorsese didn't win best director until The Departed in whatever 2004 it just like it just doesn't make any it just we have no control over it so you got to just keep working and keep doing your art and I don't know I just like gives a shit but my answer is uh is uh, ah, cat in the moon <laughs> my the movie i directed yeah which collider gave me the nicest review in the whole world so thank you collider i don't know who wrote that but they're very smart <laughs> <laughs> she's like she's like i didn't write it for sure uh what about for you kiersey well, I'm not going to say anything now that Alex just inspired but me. But he did give such a good perspective. He did perspective. give an answer eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah, right, at the end. I'll also throw in Castle on the Ground. Last oh, time we were here. Yeah, Castle I, on the I love your work in that and Imogen thank and uh, Nev as well. I think the yeah, three of you are right. exceptional yeah, that in that one. I take back my answer. <laughs> <laughs> I have like six movies to list. Uh, no, I'm totally kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, I, I don't. It should be about the process, though. It should be yeah. about, you know, because art is subjective and you can never control the outcome. So you just. You make something that you hope resonates with a larger audience, and then you know, and then you you let it go. 
Not that we actually have any control, but this is why I love what I do so much, because I find something that I'm deeply passionate about, and I know that like every single angle that you could help something get out there to an audience that it might connect with is important. So that is why I sit here and I blab about your work all the time. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. I'm not letting you off the hook, though. Oh, I'm still <laughs> sitting here thinking as well. I don't know. I mean, Sweetheart was seen by a whole lot of people, but well, I'm obsessed I with that also, movie. I don't really have... I don't really even necessarily like pay attention to, I just live in my world of um Kiersey is so knowing. inspiring that way. I will say like, <laughs> she really, no, like actually Kiersey is someone who is so about the art and so doesn't care or know what happens. And I actually think it's like your job, like this is why Clyde or something, you to go, no, this is important. We need to get it out and us to be like, oh, thank you. You know, but it's yeah. kind of not our job to pick this should have done this and this should have done that, you know, and I think it's actually impossible. And the second you start thinking that, you start making the wrong choices. And wrong choices start... and I feel like it's be so miserable. Yeah. Miserable. Misery. You just wanna die. You all have the right mentality. I take what you just said about our work very, very seriously and when it doesn't pan out, I take it personally and get deeply hurt that everyone's not watching the things I adore Oh so my much. gosh. I love that. That's so cool. That's this awesome. is where all of my gray hair is That's why we need you. I love that, we need you. <laughs> oh yeah. God. Um, is anyone yelling at me to rap? Do you need me to rap? Yeah. Damn. But the All right. thing is that it's a relationship. All right. Yeah. Let me check. Oh, the, oh man. You know, All right. I don't want to spoil anything, us. but I'm going to get mad at myself if I don't at least ask this question and ask you to answer it cryptically. Do you think at the end of the movie, Susie regrets anything she's done where she would go back in time if given the choice and made a different decision to start? Personally, um... Ah, uh, well, I guess I can't go into detail. Um, yes, I think that she would have gone about things differently. I do actually. Yeah. I think she's good at looking back. And um, I think she's a good problem solver. And she's good at... Uh, she, I don't know, a problem, good problem solver, and she's good at making proper split choices second. and split second, de yes, decisions. And mm -hmm. so I think that when she looks back at how things went, she would be good at going, oh, I could have done this or I could have done that. And if I would have said this and I would have said that, or if I would have, oh, maybe if I could, oh, I should have moved this piece here and that would have gone there and it would have mm -hmm. turned out like this. Like, I do think that she would look back at it like that. Do you know? Yeah, and that's you know? why, again, she's just surviving. She's looking at this moment and she's saying, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, you know, and, and so that's why the ending is also, it's it's what it is because I think in that moment, what's playing more than anything is ev from the very beginning of what we see in the film to the end, every single bit is playing in her mind, and she's fixing. She's like, "That's where I'm. That's what I could have done." And this is, yeah, it's so hard to. I want to like. I dig felt in so like, bad yeah. dumping that question on you, but that was a great cryptic okay, way of okay, answering okay. it. You know, that, that last shot is just absolutely superb. I can't yeah. imagine a better last shot Agreed. for this film, thank for this you, story. Man. I must let you go. Uh, I'm, thank, I didn't mean to you. cut you no, off. No, 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 <laughs> that was, I, the, the, the joy of storyboarding is um, prepping. I'm someone who thrives on preparation, so. Do you? Yes, shocker. Do you love a storyboard? Yeah, I know that. You should have brought your binder. Your binder should have been. She had a binder. Up. She'd be like, "I did picture that your face would look like this in this thing." I'm like, "Well, that's not me, Sophie." I'm but like, "That's a picture that. of Kevin Klein." I was like, "So I don't think I'm gonna be able to look like that." It's the exact like. It's down to like such detail. It's you have to share some share some of that on Instagram. Oh, you like, should. It's it really. If you, it's, it, it is on my it's, Instagram. If you scroll, it's, but it's hidden. You have to scroll through but it's yeah um so i'm gonna go stalk your instagram and i'm going it. to find gay animals stalk, yes and then you're gonna go talk about cat in the moon to spread it out that, to an even wider audience that too. and cast on the ground which I, is have whole, I have like 500 other interviews but i have a whole uh, <laughs> list of right movie here. list from this one <laughs> yeah. i got it covered don't worry thank i have you. to let you guys go thank yeah. you so much for we being love you. here thank congratulations you. on Collider. Susie searches thank you everybody out there keep an eye out for it thank you guys want to go break all of marble's plates now yeah let's do that all right i like that plan 